Let's turn now to the EV market. Tesla had the big launch with the Cybertruck yesterday. I think we learned a lot there. Steve Wesley, founder, managing partner at the Wesley Group, also former board member at Tesla. Your thoughts, um, you know, was this a monumental moment in that Tesla's really establishing its brand power? <laughs> well, look, I, I don't think the Cybertruck announcement uh, mattered all that much, uh, but over the next 24 months, it, it may be transformative. And look, Tesla's a $100 billion company in 2023. They've got four super successful models, including the Tesla Model Y, which today is the biggest selling car model in the world, electric or gas. That is stunning. And they've got a booming energy business. But is the Cybertruck's edgy Star Wars design going to make it uh, a, a huge hit? It's certainly a big marketing story, but it's seventy to $80,000 a throw. That's a pretty small market unless they can lower prices. And they did it with the Model 3, they did it with the Y. I have a feeling over the next two years, if they can bring this thing down to $50,000, it's gonna be a huge deal for the company. Wait and see. Right, yeah. And look, when we had the Ford Lightning, the Ford F-150 Lightning, there were a lot of pre-orders for that. There are a slew of pre-orders for the Cybertruck. It's my understanding at least 40% of pre-orders actually turn into real orders. Is that what you're thinking? Well, it, let's take it to the top first. The Ford F-150 is an astonishing story. It's the best selling vehicle in the United States 41 years in a row, you gotta hand it to Ford. But the Cybertruck has 2 million pre-orders. I think you're right, I think at least half go in, maybe two thirds. But if they just sell 500,000 vehicles, and I'm guessing it won't be more than 50,000 next year, so I don't think yesterday was that transformative, but if they come back into 150,000 in 2025, that's gonna cut into Ford's market share a lot. So if they can get the price down, and if they can take as little as 20% of that market from Ford and Rivian, that's tough news for Ford, phenomenal news from Tesla. It all comes down to can Tesla do it again in terms of keeping the price down? I think they will. Battery prices are dropping. They're moving faster than nearly anybody. That'll be the great truck smackdown. And so, you know, as we see the great sales for the F-150, I, I think they actually uh, were talking about some record sales today. But in the meantime, Ford and GM are sort of pairing back a little bit on EV thoughts overall because they have to, you know, face the higher costs. And so they're sort of capping spending in that area for right now. What do you think about the EV market and the battle that goes on? If the big three are going to sort of scale back, where where do you see the pecking order happening? Well, that's the punchline. There's about to be a new big three in town, and there's a lot of hemming and hawing out there, and you know EVs are stacking up on dealer lots. Nonsense. U.S. EV sales were up 49 percent Q3 over Q3, and that number is getting bigger. EV sales were up globally 35% this year. And what you really have is a tale of two cities. The legacy makers, Ford, GM, Toyota, are seriously behind, slow to the punch, and losing staggering amounts on each car. Ford lost $36,000 on every EV it sold in Q3. That's not good. At the same time, Tesla grew 35% year over year. Koreans, Hyundai, and Kia growing 30% year over year. And BYD growing an astonishing 75%. So the old big three may be out the window about to be replaced by the Koreans, Tesla, and uh, BYD and the other Chinese makers. The punchline, everybody's going electric. Here are the numbers. Last year, 10.5 million EVs were sold globally. That's 14% of all cars sold in the world. This year, it's going to be darn close to 20%. Next year in the 30s, everyone's going electric. Yeah. Well, Ford CEO Jim Farley said on Twitter that in October, Ford had a record month for lightning sales and actually said um, broke another record with November being their biggest, their best ever sales month with lightning with nearly 4,400 EV trucks. That's over a 100 percent increase from last year. Um, 
I guess people still want EVs. Is it going to be EVs? Is it going to be hybrids? I was under the impression that demand for EVs had sort of been a little rocky of late. You know, they were hot, then they were not, and people, for example, one guy said he drove his F-150 across country and left it halfway across the trip because he was so aggravated with it. Um, you know, it takes time to acclimate to something new like this. Uh, well, the, the, the numbers, the numbers, um, you know, again, up 49% this year. And look, what's going on? This is not magic, and it's not because people have bleeding green hearts. It's for the simple reason the costs are going down. Tesla reduced costs 25% this year. That is astonishing. Battery prices down 14% this year alone. We expect them to be down another 40% by 2025. That's just in two years. As prices continue to drop, sales go up. And again, right now, people say, oh, are people really going to buy electric cars? The number one selling car worldwide today is an American-made EV, the Tesla Model Y. So this is happening. And the fact that every year, and here's where the Biden stimulus really makes a huge difference, more charging stations are out there. Now over 100,000 places you can charge. Range anxiety is going away. Cars that used to have 200 miles of range now have three to 400 and costs are going down. What's not to like about that? And you can reduce service and costs three quarters to boot. So I think, uh, you know, it's no surprise more and more manufacturers are going electric all the time. It's not, uh, you're not putting that one back in the model. So Ford said it lost 1.7 billion in profit from the UAW strike. There has been talk and some reports of some um, workers at Tesla striking, at least in one country. But Tesla, Toyota, some of the others, I think they're working without unions. Try and, you know, Elon Musk does his best to sort of give stock options and actually raise wages so that the workers do feel appreciated. Is this something that you see as a potential real headwind, maybe even in 2024, where he might see a Tesla strike? Look. Um, I think American automakers in general have two headwinds. One, they've got rising labor costs. And two, they have a legacy 100-year built-out dealer network. Tesla doesn't have to worry about those things as much. They've got the most roboticized manufacturing lines in the world. And they don't have to worry about an external dealer network with conflicted interests. So what you really have is a battle here between the Chinese makers like BYD and SAIC that will become household names that have a huge advantage with lower cost labor and lower cost batteries. And you've got Tesla that's been the global leader in streamlined manufacturing and in software. And this over the air software that drops literally as much as two, three, four, five hundred dollars of pure profit to every car sold annually. That gives Tesla a big edge. So that's why uh, Tesla and the Chinese are showing up on top. There's no mystery here. The American automakers are going to have to figure out how to fix for that. So Tesla today is at 238. Where do you think that's headed? And BYD, is that a stock you would buy? So I, I think you have to look at BYD, fastest growing auto company in the world, extremely profitable. They're going to challenge Tesla in Q1 and maybe even in Q4 for who's selling the most units. Tesla's going to be at roughly 1.8 million. BYD is going to be right there with them. And I will tell you right now, BYD is going to be a little more profitable. But Tesla's ready to strike back at BYD, bringing a $25,000 car to market in the next 24-ish months. That's going to be powerful for uh, Tesla. And then BYD is going to have to deal with the issue that there are IoT devices in every Chinese car they sell, a lot of people are not going to be as comfortable with that. So a lot of intervening factors. It's going to be a fascinating one to watch and find. But there is a new big three in town. And investors need to get their hands around that. Thank you so much, Steve Wesley. Great to see you of the Wesley Group. Thank you.